Hey everyone, welcome back to another Hardware News Recap of the Week. It's been a crazy week with the whole Asus story and the burning motherboards, but we have a lot of other stuff to recap as well. And this one, Asus, you <laughs> can't escape them, is uh, regurgitating old hardware as new. AMD is completely overhauling its BIOS in a massive move away from a GISA, and also 16 gigabyte NVIDIA GPUs rumored, except they're lower end than the 4070 which is 12 gigabytes. So that'll be nice and confusing for everyone. And then some major updates to the OCCT software, which has been around forever, and you should check it out if you haven't. It's a stress testing utility and hardware monitoring solution, but it got a massive UI overall and actually looks pretty good right now. Uh, and they're coming up on 20 years of development. So we're providing them with some mod mats and solder mats to give away for something we'll talk about in this episode. Before that, this video is brought to you by Warframe and its brand new update, the Duviri Paradox. The newest update makes it easy for returning players to jump in right away with tons of new content, but also adds a path for new players to start out. These updates go beyond just cosmetics and quality of life changes. There are tons of new elements to the game and a completely unique, massive new open world to explore. And for action RPG or third person shooter and slasher fans, Warframe is worth the free download to put your gaming PC to work. The new update features a new cinematic quest alongside highly replayable roguelite missions. A few of us on the team at GN play Warframe and like the game, so it was a natural sponsor fit. Check out Warframe The Duviri Paradox at the link below and use the code on the screen for extra unlocks. First up, there's a major computer hardware show coming up with tons of really cool booths and testing equipment and computer parts on display. We're going to be out there. It's Computex. It is the biggest show in the industry with CES as a close second some years. Uh, and it's been canceled for the last three years, but Computex is coming back. So we're super excited about this. This is out in Taiwan, and it's a really fun opportunity for our team to meet with engineers, visit labs and factories and testing facilities like we saw at Height not too long ago, and like we've seen at Noctua's booth previously, and we get to look at the new products. So the thing to let you all know about, we can't reveal some of the specifics of the products yet, but what I can say is that we have a massive amount of specifically coolers and cases lined up that we're going to be looking at. There's some reason a ton of them this year are getting announced. They're pretty interesting, and that's all I can say about those. And a couple of pre-built companies, when they reached out to us, they said, hey, will you come look at our new pre-built? We think you won't hit it, which is always a great marketing pitch. Uh, we said, sure, we'll come look at it. They also offered to send us review samples, and we said, no, uh, we buy pre-builds for reviews. So that's kind of, that's the main thing we try to do for our pre-built reviews, and almost all of them these days is actually go through the real consumer experience. So you can't have someone in media sampling look at the system before sending it out to make sure it's not like, uh, has, doesn't have a fan backwards. It's an actual thing that happened. Didn't take me too long to remember a really weird thing that happened with the preview. So anyway, Computex, really fun and exciting show, lots of cool stuff. And uh, our video format changes just because some of you haven't seen us cover a trade show in like three years or maybe ever if you're, you've found us in the last three years. The way we cover these, get everyone on the same page, uh, instead of doing the sort of 30 minute videos every day or every couple days, like the recaps, we switch completely to a normally seven to 15 minute format for the videos. And it is highly and specifically focused on the booth or the vendor whose headquarters we're at, where we look at just their lineup of new products because there's normally enough to fill that kind of video. And then we run multiple of those per day. So you might see as many as say four within a 24 hour period, depending on how much there's to talk about, but they're shorter and they're hyper-focused on just the news for the product. And to be clear on our coverage, because this isn't always the case, they don't pay us to go to their booths. We only go to their booths if we think there's going to be something interesting. Actually, sometimes we go to them even if they won't tell us if there's anything interesting, and then we promptly leave when there's nothing interesting. So uh, basically the way we look at it is, it is literally my job to report on the computer hardware news because we try to focus on sort of the journalism side of it. Uh, and that means the coverage you see from us, although it will have normal sponsor spots as all of our videos do, or it's got the before that brought to you by blah, blah, blah. Uh, the booth visits are strictly news gathering and they're never sponsored by the company whose booth we are visiting like to produce that video, which I want to make clear because it's important. I, it's, I've had some weird conversations with companies where we finish our video shoot and they tap me and they're like, so how much? I'm like, what? <laughs> like, excuse you? So also, put that in here for any companies. 
who want to do that, so you know, don't do that because uh, it's not cool. And we'll probably talk about how not cool it is, but that's only happened like twice in 15 years. So, And even before we did the store, we did trade shows that way, but these days, being able to bring a larger team and produce higher quality content, it is made possible largely by the store on store.gamersaccess.net. So if you want to support our type of coverage and our independent reporting, you can go to the store and grab one of these GN15 shirts. They're for our 15 year anniversary. They've been selling through crazy fast in the past week because of all of the X3D exploding CPU and ASUS coverage. So uh, anyway, if you want to get one, you should head over to the store now and grab it because they are limited and we're only going to do one run of them and then that's it, they're gone. So we're planning to, based on the numbers right now, wind down the sales of this shirt within the next couple weeks. So you got a little bit of time, but not much and it directly funds our reporting and our visits to events like Computex. Okay, Asus, reusing the 3090 Ti coolers on the 40 series because Asus apparently can't stay out of the news. Although this isn't maybe as bad as having a video titled Scumbag Asus published on your ROG Ally launch day. Uh, fun fact, that was a total accident. I was waiting to see if I could hear back from them because Asus had reached out to us during the exploding CPUs research. I put this on the YouTube community page after part one, but before part two. And they said, we'd like to fly out to your office with three people to talk about what's going on openly. And we said, okay, sure. How many microphones should we prepare for them? Uh, we're available on these days. And they said they wanted to come out this week. Fun fact, uh, the week's over. So they didn't reply to me after I said, yes, we would like to film this because you want it to be in the open. It's not in the open if it's not filmed. And I just have to go on camera and be like, yeah, Asus said we can trust them and they're working on nice things. No, none of them wanted to be on camera and be held accountable for their own statements. Like that's not how it works. So okay. no filming as you walk in. Okay. Is that we'll, cool? We'll keep it pointed at the floor while we walk in. Okay. No filming. I want a record of everything for, okay. for okay. your guys' sake okay. too. Alex. So I think we've shown with the new egg story that we are happy and, and want to afford the platform uh, to these manufacturers to give a statement on something that they screwed up. And hopefully the statement is, we screwed this up and don't worry, we're gonna cover you. Here's our written policy formally, this is what we are doing. And, uh, and sort of going into detail on what went wrong, how they're fixing it. That's all you ever wanna hear. And that's our approach to fixing, like if we mess up a chart or something too. So that's what we were looking for. It was a great opportunity for them that they actually prompted. They're the ones who contacted us and then just silence after I said, I wanna film it. So that was interesting. It kind of reminds me, someone in the comments posted this, of MSI when we did the MSI kill shot video where MSI's uh, old strategy, not sure if they still do it, was to delay bad press into irrelevance. So they'd kind of string you along with uh, our opinion on this, of course, reading, I mean, we presented all of the receipts for it, but they'd string you along with what they want to do, what they want to say, how they're going to fix it. They're researching it. We're testing it. We're going to get back to you and make sure your data matches our data. And then it just kind of disappears silently. So it's a classic strategy of can we delay them into the point where no one watches this anymore. And it's really backfired for Asus because we waited for an answer. And I was like, okay, fine, we'll just publish it. And it happened to be like 50 minutes before the ally thing which I'd forgotten about. So anyway, this will get its own time bar on the news now because it's a separate rant, but you should go to the YouTube community page if you want to read about uh, what our interpretation was of their email. It's, uh, it, it's unfortunate that they did it that way. Now, over the weekend, there have been some brief additional developments on the ASUS story. We're going to cover those in a separate video, not in this one, uh, but for right now, we're not really satisfied with the response thus far, and we'll revisit this later. Asus has changed some of its statements, but Asus hasn't changed. Okay, now back to the actual news about Asus and not just the ranting about the massive missed opportunity that they created and then uh, snuffed out right away. So they announced the Ally. Hopefully it doesn't have super high VSOC. I posted in the chat of the live stream event, what's the VSOC? <laughs> no one answered. Uh, they're also reusing 3090 Ti coolers. This one isn't necessarily bad, but Asus tweeted out this live stream announcement with a sort of maybe AI generated image and it had people guess about the new RTX graphics card and what it might be. The comments are full of guesses for a 4060 Ti, 
but it ended up being 4090s with a fresh new twist. They're using 3090 Ti coolers. We assume this is possible due to the 3090 Ti and the 4090 dies being pin compatible with each other, something that became public knowledge around the time of the 4090 launch. Despite that, the 4090 board designs have thus far been unique from those for the 3090 Ti. Otherwise, we'd never have wonders such as the Midnight Kaleidoscope, which is a real product name. Based on this board image from the 4090 Tough OG's page, it looks like Asus took the 3090 Ti Tough board and made a few tweaks. We think Asus is doing this to add more models to the lineup with as little R&D cost as possible. It's not inherently a bad thing, uh, especially if there's just a massive backstock of unused coolers and they're preventing them from being literally recycled. That said, it's a weird move to make a giveaway, a massive announcement about it and live stream, and a requirement no one could reasonably meet, which was guess what these are, except for apparently this guy somehow, and he still didn't win. Up next, big AMD news, open SIL to replace AMD AGISA. AGISA is the binary code that AMD provides to motherboard vendors to establish a backbone for BIOS. So it provides the entire AMD overclocking submenu. It's different from like ASUS tweaking or whatever they call it. So ASUS Extreme Tweaker, not really a better name. Uh, and different from that, AMD's AGISA also establishes some of the uh, pages within BIOS for PBO, for Curve Optimizer, things of that nature. So it is in all BIOSes and it's something AMD makes. Uh, so that's Horizon, Threadripper, and Epic. And starting with Epic, AMD is moving to OpenSIL, OpenSIL, which is an open source rollout of an AGISA replacement. They won't coexist. Now this change is for mitigation of cybersecurity concerns as well as a means to ensure platform scalability into the future. This firmware is responsible for bringing up the most basic systems of the platform, like memory. You can imagine the potential for havoc if something so low level was unknowingly compromised. So in that sense, the move to open source is logical. More eyes on the code can be helpful to more quickly identify issues or areas of potential improvement. AMD stated that OpenSIL will be production ready by sometime in 2026 with proof of concept steps before that. The main initial focus is on AMD's server market or Epic, which is what they're developing currently. Three years might sound like a long time, but this isn't some small add-on feature because it's a complete rewrite of fundamental code. Pharonix made some points about how a replacement for AGISA is preferred to having two firmware branches. Uh, mostly because it doesn't compete with resources, and AMD has built itself a track record at this point of moving software projects to open source, and this is a continuation of that. Up next, OCCT, this is some software you should check out because there's a free version, it has stress testing and hardware monitoring built in. The hardware monitoring you can think of as similar in some ways to Hardware Info 64. It reports a lot of the same stuff, has a really nice clean interface with these updates we're gonna cover today, and uh, additionally, it's got the stress test uh, built in. So this is developed by Adrian Mercier, and the software is now 20 years old. We didn't realize it until he reached out, but uh, Mercier started developing OCCT about five years almost exactly before I started GN and launched it publicly. So we provided Adrian with a bunch of mod mats and solder mats because he's doing a giveaway for their 20-year milestone. It's a big milestone, and uh, we could appreciate it given our 15-year milestone which again, you can check out the store if you wanna grab that and celebrate it with us, but we'll talk about how he's giving those away. So uh, version 12 is publicly launching on Saturday, May 13th. It's gonna be around when this video goes up. And to celebrate, OCCT is holding a launch event. The event starts on Monday, May 15th. It'll run for two weeks with both OCCT licenses and prizes up for grabs from several companies, retailers, and again, from us, we're pitching in 10 GN solder and project mats and five large mod mats to the prize pool, and we're uh, shipping them worldwide for Adrian. So that part is on ocbase.com. He's handling the whole giveaway. We're just giving him stuff to use, and you join the OCC Discord to watch for updates. Now, uh, OCCT offers a wide range of customizable tests to help overclockers and enthusiasts verify that an OC or a system in general is stable. This can be particularly useful for you right now if you're playing around with your VSOC settings in AMD BIOS because of the recent issues. <laughs> Uh, and if you don't want to turn off Expo, but you want to bring down VSOC, you can use tools like this to run some memory stress tests and CPU loads, and you probably should, because if it's going to fail, it will fail in a stress test, and it's better to fail there than in some kind of software like Premiere or Photoshop where you're just going to lose all your work. So 
Uh, so you should check it out for that reason, if no other. You can bind a CPU stress test to specific cores, which is pretty useful actually on Intel 12th and 13th gen CPUs because of their asymmetric design. And there are also new features for pro and enterprise users that uh, Origin would have been able to use for spotting the difference in its $6,000 Genesis pre-built that we trashed because it didn't allow the CPU to run faster than base. The feature specifically is being able to compare results from two test runs to see what changed. It's pretty cool. We might look into integrating it somehow. Version 12 represents a major overhaul of both the UI and some under the hood things. OCCT has mostly come a long way visually and capability wise since inception, but Mercier put a big emphasis on making the monitoring and filtering easier with this new version, adding things like a monitoring dashboard. It actually looks really nice at the top of the window that always displays key information for your system. Additionally, future support for both Linux and Mac OS is on the way. That will put OCCT in the position of being one of the most feature-rich OC and stability tools available on Linux. And the initial version 12 launch won't support it just yet, but we're told it'll be a fast follower. There were lots of developmental hurdles that had to be overcome to get it there, and uh, he'll probably be talking about it more in the future. All the main features are available for free on ocbase.com if you want to check it out. We wanted to cover this because it's a cool utility, something we think that our audience will genuinely find useful. There's a free version, and uh, Adrian's been working on it a really long time. And this update, I, it really got my attention because uh, software monitoring and stress testing is something we live and die by. It's pretty hard to get our attention for it, but it's, it's, it's cool. I like it. So, all right, next one. NVIDIA and the 4060 Ti gets double the VRAM, allegedly. With the low-end stuff coming up, the rumor mill is focusing on the 4060 and 4060 Ti. Hardware leaker Megasize GPU on Twitter alleges that the 4060 Ti will be available in two VRAM capacities, 8 and 16 gigabytes, and notes the 4060 will only be in an 8 gigabyte version. Megasize GPU alleges that all three will be announced this month in May, with the 4060 Ti also launching in May. But the doubled up VRAM 16 gigabyte version and the 4060 non-TI won't be available until July. An announcement in May makes sense because again, Computex is right around the corner and all of the major companies will have announcements there and before it. And if there really is a 16 gigabyte version of the 4060 Ti, it's possible that this is Nvidia's quickest way to react to the recent public commentary, especially and uh, largely sort of the epicenter was hardware unboxed, commenting on eight versus 16 gigabyte cards, 12 gigabyte in there as well. Uh, so it may be a reaction to some of that. Typically, you don't see reactionary decisions like this. Uh, you can't see them at a silicon level because it's too late. It's way too late. But VRAM, if they've got the memory controllers, they can theoretically attach more VRAM modules to the board. So this one could be a reaction. Now, uh, to launch a higher VRAM card so soon after the 4070 would be a little bit strange because you're looking at an 8 and a 16 in a 4060 Ti class versus 12 on the 4070. And remember again that the 4080 was originally gonna have two versions. One of them was gonna be 12 gigabytes as well. So whether or not the decision makes sense, it's a very confusing one for consumers, but it's not the first time Nvidia has done this and played around with VRAM in confusing ways. Last time they did it was the 3060 where it had a 12 gigabyte 3060 come out not long after the 3060 Ti, which was eight gigabytes. Nvidia hopefully learned previously that having two different product versions of something with the same name was a bad idea with the 4080. It was really bad. That one had differences in like everything, not just memory. So hopefully this time with the 4060 Ti, they have taken that lesson and only the VRAM changes. But this is all rumor mill stuff from mega size GPU. So we'll find out soon enough. Next one, there's a budget Fantex G300 A case that just launched. We actually have one. We're trying to get to it to work on. Uh, Fantex launched this. They showed it off at CES this year. Originally, it was supposed to be $60. Sadly, it ended up being $70 once it actually came out. And uh, there's a triple fan version for $80. So 70 is single fan, triple is 80. The main focus of the G300A seems to be price, for one, and being as small as possible while still having enough space to fit a 360 mil liquid cooler at the front and a large GPU. Fantex specifically cites the 4090 Strix as being able to fit, but no word yet on if it's uh, fireproof for Asus's motherboards. Uh, Jesus Christ, 200 Celsius. The front and top panels of the case are ventilated. The bottom is dedicated for a power supply and a three and a half inch hard drive. And the whole case is made of steel and it has the now ubiquitous tempered glass side panel. 
There's no built-in RGB or fan hub, which helps keep costs down. Now, this is a segment of the case market that desperately needs new options because most of what's available for $60 to $80 is really old or just not very good. We'll probably do a full review on it sometime soon, so look out for that on the channel, but we don't have a timeline yet with Computex coming up. Up next, Noctua has published an updated version of its roadmap that it keeps on its website with a notable for the NHD 15. It's been delayed, the updated version again, actually. So for starters, the D15 is now listed as after quarter one, 2024, rather than quarter three, 2023 on the previous roadmap. Most other things that got pushed back were pushed by one quarter, with the exception of the 24 volt to 12 volt voltage converter. Some new Chromax black versions of coolers popped up for quarter four this year, but that's just a new colorway. White fans had also been listed under 2024, but they're now totally absent. Those first showed up at Computex 2018 or 2019. And the next gen D15 was originally planned for a 2021 launch and has faced repeated setbacks since then. For Noctua's sake, hopefully they're spending all this time improving performance because the bar on value air cooling has been raised considerably high in the last couple of years with things like the Peerless Assassin. Noctua recently has launched the NAFH1 fan hub. It has enough headers to feed eight PWM fans and is powered by SATA, can handle up to 54 watts and features OCP and SCP. But other than that, we're not gonna see anything new until a couple weeks from now when we visit their booth at Computex. And that one's always fun. Uh, the last two times we went to Computex, we awarded Noctua with the least RGB bullet of the show award. Up next, this one's a pretty big update to the MSI cyber attack that happened about a month ago. So at the time, there was 528 gigabytes of data stolen, and that data has now been posted on some dark web websites by hacker group Money Message. So the ransom demanded was allegedly in the millions, and MSI declined to pay the ransom. So the data's been posted. Security researchers at Binary started to go through the info dump and found firmware image signing keys as well as keys for Intel's boot guard, which affects up to 166 of MSI's products models. Binary published the full list of affected devices on GitHub, but it's since been taken down. If you're not familiar with what a signing key is, it's a cryptographic mechanism by which your computer knows it can trust software or firmware being installed. The system relies on having a known public key as well as a secret private key. If a bad actor wanted to, they could use this information to create malicious versions of MSI software or firmware that would install without it ever looking suspicious to anti-malware solutions. The scope of the threat should only involve MSI's own products. Intel provided a statement to Bleeping Computer regarding the boot guard component, saying, quote, it should be noted that Intel boot guard OEM keys are generated by the system manufacturer, and these are not Intel signing keys. Now, MSI in the past has been a target of other hacks, so, well, sort of, malware attempts at least, not always hacks. Uh, one of them is Afterburner, which there have been malicious versions of created, but distributed through non-MSI sites and then fed to Google search results via Google Ads. So be careful to only download MSI Afterburner from MSI directly. Uh, of course, there's other concerns if MSI servers are being breached too. Next one. There was a leak recently of the RDNA 3 RX 7600 GPU from AMD, and thanks to a couple of leaks posted from video cards, we now know what at least one of them will look like from Sapphire. The first leaked image shows retail boxes for the Sapphire Pulse AMD 7600 with eight gigabytes of memory. The photo was allegedly taken in a store somewhere in, quote, Asia. Just some geographical knowledge, Asia does not narrow anything down. That is a massive region. So somewhere in eh, approximately half of the landmass of the world, there's a 7600. Great. Video cards posted product photos of the actual card in a follow-up leak. So we'll take a brief look at those next, but the Pulse 7600 returns to a tried and true black and red gamer aesthetic. It's a safe classic at this point. It's almost nostalgic. The Shroud also borrows some of the design language from the 7900 XT and XTX reference coolers, and the card looks to be a true two-slot design with a slight extension over the I.O. bracket. The backplate has a small flow-through area at the end of the card, and the power is handled by a single 8-pin, so that'd be a maximum theoretical of 225 watts. And that's because of the PCIe slot in there as well. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, head over to the store.cameras.nexus.net to grab a shirt like this to directly support our deep dive and our research pieces like the Asus and X3D ones recently. If you missed the failure analysis video, it is super educational. Uh, we on the team learned a lot in that video because the failure analysis lab we worked with provided just really great explanations. So lots of fun, you should check it out, but subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.